Hello, and thank you for joining me. This is the Jamie Luce Podcast, and I have in studio with me again today, as my treat, my husband, Joel Luce, who is the business owner of two very successful companies. And I wanted to be able to bring him on again. We've got some wonderful principles to talk about and share with you. Um, I currently am letting everyone know about the book that I've got out, which is You Don't Need Money, You Just Need God. And it's a playbook for miraculous provision. And we have as a couple, as a family and other family members as well, had, we really watched God do some miraculous, supernatural things when it came to our finances. And anytime that we thought we needed something and didn't know exactly how to do it, how to get it, how to be about it, how to make it happen, we would go to the Lord and every time he would lead, guide and direct us in what would take us to a supernatural answer, something that on our own we couldn't have done, but with him, all things are possible. And I, again, wanted my husband, Joel, to be able to share with you as a business owner, some of the wonderful things that he has learned along the way to encourage you, to help you to know that no matter what you're called to, whether you're in ministry, whether you're just you're you're married you're you're doing life you've got a job you're a student wherever you find yourself in life there's a calling that is on your life god has a purpose and a plan for you and he desires that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers we are to prosper we are to be about our father's business we are to multiply the kingdom of god in every way in our finances, in our personal lives, in businesses, in our relationships, in everything we do, we should be those who are the builders, the ones who sustain everything, that no matter what's going on on around us in this world, and some crazy things are happening right now, but we're the ones who are living on the rock. We're the ones who should be unshakable, even if things are shaking around us. And Joel has gone through that. He's gone through some serious shakings in the business realm, in the finance realm. Um, and has really navigated those waters by faith with the Lord and come out on, on the other side successful and, yeah. a, and really seeing God do, he's even right now, dropping new ideas and things into yeah. your heart and, and we know new things are even on the horizon and they're coming. So I wanna talk in particular about a topic in the book, one of the chapters in the book, that it's chapter 11. For those of you who have the book, it's on Amazon, go get it. Uh, the chapter's title is The Art of Negotiations. And in that, we hit on the subject of tithing. And tithing is a funny subject. People get all kinds of attitudes and ideas about the word tithing, and it ruffles a bunch of feathers. But we have seen this principle literally change our lives. Yeah. And I wanted us to talk about it to encourage some people today to let them know no matter what you have an idea of, I actually hope that you start today by listening with, just remove any preconceived ideas that you have. Just let yourself be teachable to learn something new. Maybe think about something from a different perspective that you never have before and see if God won't speak something to your own personal heart and life to take you in a direction that leads to blessing. So in the chapter, The Art of Negotiations, which you're fabulous at, um, I wanna talk or let you actually explain what kind of happened, where we were at, without giving mm -hmm. the whole thing away. We're not going to tell you the whole thing. You have to get the book to get the whole story. But the Lord had dropped something into your heart while you were praying one night. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I want you to go ahead and take it from there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was, it was, um, it, it wasn't, didn't start out to be about tithing. Mm -hmm. it, it was about wanting to see my life change, our life change in a dramatic way. And, and through finance, through, through, through more income. And it was about, you know, because we felt called to, to do more things and to do, and, the, and that where we were at was good, mm -hmm. but we knew it wasn't where God wanted us to be. Mm -hmm. And so it was, okay, Lord, how do I get there? How, how do I do this? What, 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 are, what are you saying? And sometimes it's not what God's saying to us sometimes, but it's what we're saying to God. And then, and then I think, I believe mm -hmm. that then God tests us mm -hmm. to see 
if what we're saying to him, if we're if that's a, a real heart thing for us, meaning that we really care about it, that it's really important to us, mm -hmm. that we're willing to commit and put the time in, and to, whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Well, for us and for me that night, it it was about increasing our income, and it was actually doubling our income, and and I I, I had told another group that I was speaking with that I'm not sure it was biblical or not, <laughs> that the prayer that I prayed that night, it was a crazy prayer. It was literally a crazy prayer that, God, if you double my income, I'll double my tithe. Okay, now before you go on, I want to interject because I know that people will say, okay, well, the tithe, just so that we're clear, yeah. is 10%. Right. The tithe simply means the 10th. Tenth. Tenth. That's what that That's means. Right. It doesn't, there is no double tithe Right. according to scripture. Right. And I think that's probably even why you were thinking, I know this isn't necessarily biblical, right. but the idea behind what you prayed was, I'm going to do twice as much. If right. you will do this for me, Lord, not only will I give you this, I'm going to double what I give to you. Yeah. So take yeah. it away. <laughs> no, that, and, that's, and that's a good point. It, it, it was really, uh, and, and, and I guess not necessarily a tithe, but, but an additional 10%, a, double, right. a doubling. Right. And, and I don't know why I thought of that. I just knew it was in my heart that I learned the principles in a very short period of time that if I give, he's going to give back to me. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I sow, then I'm going to reap. Right. And then that, that whatever I sow into, and if it's good ground, it's going to be multiplied back to me. Right. 30, 60, 100 fold, and sometimes even more. Right. And, and that's what's beautiful about God is that even when you don't deserve it, and even when you do it wrong, and even when you you you, you do it with your heart, you, all of your heart, and you say a crazy prayer like, Lord, I'll, I'll double my tithe if you double my income this year. And God God takes us at our heart, yeah. you know, and what's in our spirit. And, and sometimes it may not even make sense in our heads what we're even saying or praying. Right. But 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 when it comes out of out of out of a, a heart of of wanting to be closer to God and wanting to do what He's called you to do and wanting to to improve your life and your family and 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 be able to do things uh, in a positive way for the kingdom of God, you know that's what He looks at. It says, "How many scriptures have we all read that says He looks on the heart, not the outward?" Right. You know, and so so God heard my prayer that night. And the very thing I prayed, he did that year, yeah. you know, and, and throughout that year, that was toward the beginning of the year, throughout that year, then he doubled our income that year. And it helped us accomplish some things that, that we were trying to do. And, and, and part of it was a, another new home mm -hmm. and some other things that with our children and, and other things that were going on mm -hmm. and in ministry as well. Right. And, and. Not to give it all away, but I do have to, I guess I do have to say the, the, the one part that is so important is that I didn't do what I said I was going to do, and God did what he said he was going to do. And and in, in prayer one night, he reminded me of that oath. And there's some powerful scriptures, especially in the Old Testament. They're, they're a little more brutal in the Old Testament <laughs> yeah. than they are in the New Testament. Yeah. <laughs> And where it says, you should have never made that oath to me. And when I heard that, and I read that, I had never been so broken in a, in a prayer time with the Lord that I was that night for hours weeping. And I don't cry a lot. I cried that night. I mean, I cried a lot and came and told you about it and everything. And then we gave that extra uh, double tie within three or four days on that very next Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then within 90 days, God gave it all back to us. Yeah. Gave it all back to us. But again, I think it's God looking on our hearts and saying, are you, are you gonna, are you gonna tie? Are you gonna give me what, what, I've, what I've asked you to do? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's mine anyway to begin with, mm -hmm. the 10th. Mm -hmm. And then the other is offerings. Then I think that really shows our heart towards God right. and towards the kingdom of God. And, and you know, it's, what does it say? Seek first 
his righteousness, you know, and, and the kingdom of God, right? Right, right? And those things, and then all those other things will be added to us. Right. You know, so to me, all those other things are the things that we want and need. Mm-hmm. So the things that we wanted, the things that we needed, God supplied. But, but, it, but I think it's a heart issue. Yeah. I, I, think, I think tithing and giving is a heart thing. It is. I think that with tithing, it's the one thing you can do such a quick self-check. Because what will we so easily spend our money on? What do we so easily give our pocketbook to? What things do we easily say? Well, I, I, you know, I just, there are people who will give dues regularly, monthly to organizations. Mm-hmm. You'll pay a monthly fee to go to the gym. Right. You know, if you're someone who cares about working out all the time and they don't think twice, but well, that's the fee I got to pay every month that I, mm-hmm. you know, and, and tithing is interesting because tithe is not me giving to the Lord what belongs to me. Right. Tithing is what giving back to the Lord what belongs to him. It's a returning. Right. If yeah. I, it's like saying, Joel, here's a hundred dollar bill. Mm-hmm. And then I turn around and do something and turn back to you and say, now, will you hand me back my hundred dollar bill? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not giving me a hundred dollars. You're just giving back to me what I gave to you. And as Christians, we have the full understanding, or at least we should, that everything we have comes from him. Scripture teaches us that, tells us that every good gift comes from the Father above. And there's no variance of turning. There's no no shadow of turning. He doesn't think one thing one day and then change his mind and think something different the next. He's given us principles not to hem us in, not to say you have to do it my way or the highway, but he gives us principles because he says, you can learn how dependable I am. Yeah. There is protection in those parameters. I, I think of one of the stories in the book of mine where I, it, I talk about tithing and what the Lord did for me when I gave a tithe that I thought I didn't have. It's, it's one thing when you think, okay, I have it this month, right. I'll give it. It's another thing when you don't have enough to pay any of the bills. Right. And that's all you have left. And you think I'm supposed to give that to you. And now how do I buy groceries? And how do I put gas in the car? And how do I pay that? It's understanding that if I give to God what belongs to him, the protection of those parameters is that he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So that not only will he then take care of my needs and he'll do it supernaturally. He did in the story I tell in the book, he supernaturally took care of all the needs when I was obedient and did what what I should have done. Yeah. But he's not telling it to us to be hard and dogmatic and say, do it my way. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I love you. And I have put in front of you a way to live this life blessed and in abundance and protected. Right. So, you know, some people will say, well, I tithe sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, And you put this into practice that day and did watch what God did and and the grace that he showed during that time to say, I'm going to teach you a very valuable lesson about when you ask me (laughs) and when I, and when I do what I say I'm going to do. Hi, my name is Jamie Luce. I wanted to share with you some information about a brand new book entitled, You Don't Need Money, You Just Need God. It's a playbook for miraculous provision. And I want to share it with you because it solves the problem we are all facing right now. The economy is going crazy. Gas prices are soaring. There's wars and rumors of wars. We've got everything hitting us all at once with interest rates rising. You need to know what to do. And so many times we think we need the money, but you don't need money. I'm telling you, the answer is you need God. And that's exactly what we want to teach you through this book. We'll give you practical ways to know what to do and how to do it so that you get answers now. You can find my book on Amazon. You can also go to jamieloose.com. You can also find this book at you don't need money, you just need God.com. This book is available today. But so many will say, well, I did that. And then things got crazy and, you know, things changed and now we don't have it. But, you know, so I would like to know how you have looked at this principle and lived it are you still living it do you always live it is it a part-time thing is it a full-time thing what does that look like for you yeah i you know when i was younger and serving the lord i i would give an offerings but i never really tithed and and i really didn't fully understand it because it wasn't taught very well in the church that i grew up in 
Um, as I got older, came back to the Lord in my 20s, uh, it was taught very well um, by our, our, our pastor mm-hmm. um, where, where we met. And, and they did a great job of, of, of teaching that. And I think that's one thing that's missing in the church. And I think that's a big part of your book mm-hmm. is, is, is really um, explaining using, using actual stories and actual uh, people and, and things and, and concepts and principles and bi- biblical principles mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to make it work in, 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 in your own life. Mm-hmm. And, and to see that, I, I think with the tithe, I, I think one of the biggest things with that is whether, whether you're in feast or famine, whether think, you know, it's tough times, like you said, someone that's, well, I tried that. And it, you know, and things got worse, and and they continue to get worse. Those are the times that that I I believe, whether it's God testing you or not, and and it could be, it could be, it was with me, it was with us, but but but, or it could just be a, a difficult time. Right. But but the key in my and 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 what I've read in 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 the Word, and the testimonies that I've heard and that are in your book is making it a priority right. is when when you when the tie with your money becomes the priority and then then you every other bill every other commitment every other gym bill whatever it is <laughs> and i mean even gas to get to work yeah becomes a, a lesser priority mm-hmm. and god will make a way and see that you get you know where you need to be Right. When you begin to make that a priority, I mean, we experienced that during the recession of 08, 09, when things were really bad, yeah. where we were losing millions of dollars overnight mm-hmm. in, in, in one of our companies and, and not knowing when, where the bottom was. Right. And, and, but we kept tithing. We kept giving. We kept giving offerings. We cut out restaurants. We cut out doing, you know, vacations. We cut out Christmas gifts to one another. We, we gave them to our kids, but not to each other right. for two years in a row, I think. And and we did whatever we had to do, but we never stopped tithing. Right. We never stopped giving. Right. And I think it's prioritizing your life, right. your finances around that, right. and then everything else will begin to fall in place. Right. And then God is faithful. Yeah. He's so faithful mm-hmm. that he will do what he said he will do. Right. You know, it says that he will he will open up the windows of heaven mm-hmm. and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. Right. And when you tithe, and when we tithe, mm-hmm. he'll like you said earlier, he'll rebuke the devourer. Right. I need some things rebuked in my life, yeah, and and in my family, and 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 in certain situations in our companies, mm-hmm. you know, that we need we need the enemy rebuke, right. And God said, I, I'll make you a deal that if you tithe, if you give him that tenth, yeah. I'll do that for you. I'm right. going to open up the wind, windows of heaven. Right. I'm going to pour you out a blessing. And in the end, I'm going to rebuke the devourer right. for your sake. Right. Because you did this. Right. Because you believed me yeah. and you were faithful. Right. And, and you committed to it and you prioritized it. Mm-hmm. And I think that is the key, mm-hmm. is making it the number one priority in finances. Start there, everything else is after. Right. And then watch and see what God will do. Right. And, you know, I, I'm not sitting here even trying to think, give tithe or, or send an offering to this ministry. <laughs> We're not asking for that. No. We don't, I don't have a way for you to do that. I'm not asking you to do that. We're teaching a principle where you give into your mm-hmm. local storehouse, the church you attend, That's right. the place that you get ministry from, so that God can then bless your life mm-hmm. out of that place that the needs of the body are met. I mean, tithing is, we, we've been talking about how it affects us personally, but it also affects all those around us. It, mm-hmm. It's a body ministry. God chose tithing as a way to make sure that the needs of the body are met right. and not just us personally. It's a way for us to do what you mentioned, the scripture that says, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God. Right and his righteousness, what's right to God, yeah. not what's right to me. Right. I mean, we tend to live this life so many times thinking I just do what I think is best for me, but we're supposed to be God-minded. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be kingdom-minded. What does God say about this? What should I be doing? How should I be giving? We do that 
a lot together. Yeah. We'll sit down and say, okay, what is the plan this year? Yeah. Where do we want to give? We even challenged one another this year on what dream of giving yeah. we dream about giving. What is the dream this year that we can give and do that is without our reach, beyond our reach right now, that on our own, we can't do this right now. We supernaturally yeah. want to see God give into us so that we can give this away. That that's We love to dream like that. Yeah. And we've got a current one. We yeah. want done by the end of this year, a dream that we're dreaming to give. And we're expecting to see God do some miraculous things in order to enable us to do that. Why? Why do, why do we think we have an, an ear, you know, have the Lord's ear that he would hear us? And I think it goes back to what you said, that he knows what's on our heart. He knows we've said, no, Lord, you are the priority. What you say, that's what I want to be about. I, I want to, I, yes, do I want my family blessed? Yes. Do I want to be able to do fun things with my family? Yes. Do I want to have a nice house? Sure. Do I want to drive a nice car? Yeah. I don't want to have it in the shop all the time and worry about it. I want those things. But what I really want is to please the heart of God. I really want to be about God's business. I really want to be able to say, look at what God's doing over there and look at that ministry or look at that person, how God changed their life because we were able to help in that in that way, whatever that is, the giving, it's, it's, it begins with the tithe, but it certainly doesn't end with the tithe. And I've watched you do that over and over again in business. Um, that might even not look like money in the traditional sense. Like we, you know, uh, we mentioned that uh, we've helped and are helping to send someone through their entire college, private right. college right. Ed education. It's not cheap. <laughs> um, and not only that, but you had someone who worked for you at one time who was battling alcoholism mm -hmm. and you wanted to make sure and do your best as in the marketplace, a minister of God, you took your business as your calling and you chose to make sure and pay for a way that he could go get help and wouldn't lose his job and be able to sustain his family. There are ways we can get involved and it's about having that heart of giving, yeah. however that works and that, looks. I mean, that's a great point. Um, babe, maybe I shouldn't call you babe. Don't On TV. Me. I'm uh, still your babe. Jamie okay. Luce. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean, that, that's a great point because if, if God puts it on my heart or our heart mm -hmm. to help someone that's not even a believer right, and, and to take care of them and to maybe send them to rehab or, or to... And we've done some pretty amazing things or crazy things even right. show up to people's houses on Christmas morning right. and, and give them money that morning right. because God spoke to us uh, the night before <laughs> yeah. and not knowing what their need was and right. that they didn't have presents, that they didn't have enough money to pay their bills at, on Christmas day. Right. We didn't know that. Right. But if God, if God will take care of the unbeliever, mm -hmm. how much more will he take care of the believer? Right. If you're a believer in God and you're tithing and you know, God will send people into your life and he will do, you talk about crazy stories yeah. in Jamie's book. I mean, they, these are insane stories <laughs> what did, about what God has done. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it'll encourage you, but there, there are so many uh, amazing principles and concepts and, and just how to do certain things. And, and to be able to have success in your life on a whole nother level. And it's not just success with money. Right. It, it's success with, with touching people and transforming lives and then being able to have those stories. Right. My God, have a story. Yeah. Have a, I would rather have a story about what I was able to do for somebody else right. than what somebody did for me. Right. Don't it's better you, to don't, give than receive. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't we want to be the ones that, that, wow, I was able to, I was able to give that person a car and we've done that many times. Mm -hmm. I was able, I was able to help that individual out and, and get their life straightened out. Right. Don't, don't all of us want those stories. I want right. more of those stories. Right. I want a million more of those stories right. before I leave this earth, right. you know, and, 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 I look young, but I'm not young <laughs> and um, the white hair gives it away. But, um, but, but, but I want a million more of those. Yeah. 
So, so let's be the ones. Why, yeah. why, why not us? Right. You know, why does it always have to be someone else? Yeah. And that's what I believe. God, I mean, we started with nothing, mm-hmm. you know, and we began tithing, we began giving, and we began seeking God. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Right. I mean, that was really the simple process, three-step right. process, right. and believing God and watch God do the miraculous in our life and kept doing it. Right. You know, repeat. Repeat, repeat, right, right. do that over again. That worked. Do that again. Right, right. And and same thing in business. But 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 and God will give you uh, amazing stories that you too will have and be able to testify about and encourage someone else. Right. Not only transform somebody's life, right? But but it transforms your own life. It does to where to where it, it is so meaningful to you. That, I mean, if you think about it and we reflect over our lives, especially getting a little older, mm-hmm. you tend to reflect over your life a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And what, what did I do? What did I accomplish? Yeah. And I want to do something great for the kingdom of God. And right. we want to. And I know you do, too. Yeah. And, and I believe this book will help you do that. You know, that, that's why we're talking about this. We don't need the money. Trust me. We, we don't we just need, need God. the money <laughs> from, from the book sales. Yeah. That's not what any of this is about. Right. This is about helping you and you getting the resources and, and getting the, the information and knowing how to do what we've done. Right. And, and, and living a life that is so far above what you could ever imagine or dream. Right. Do that. I mean, you know, trust in God. Yeah. Trust in God. Trust Him to take care of you when you give your time. Right. And never stop. You know, I mean, I, I talked to that uh, a group of, of young people, like I was talking about in another session. And I said, man, if you're down to your last $90, mm-hmm. give God nine bucks. Give, give him the $9 tithe on that $90 and let him multiply that back to you. Right. You know, what are you going to do with $9 anyway? I mean, <laughs> barely get a cappuccino you know, these days for $9. So, so yeah. anyway, that's, that's what I believe. And that's what the Bible teaches. You know, as we trust God and we do it his way, then then he provides miraculously for us. Right. You know, I think of, we'll close with this little scripture story. Uh, it, w- Jesus asks someone while he's at dinner and says, who's the neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And he tells the story of what we're all familiar with, the Good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. And who was the Samaritan? Who was the one who cared? Who was the one who gave? And that one, I find interesting, he was a businessman. Mm -hmm. He was on his way to go do business. Mm -hmm. And along the way, during that business journey, he sees someone in need. He took care of his need and went and finished his business. (laughs) You know, and then made sure and said, and I'll take care of it if there's anything else on my way back. I'll make sure this one is taken care of. It's not always, giving doesn't always look the same. Caring for people's needs can look so many different ways. But we've hopefully shared with you all today uh, the real heart of what it is for God to know that this is, this is the heart of God, that we become like him. And he teaches us how to be that giver just the way that he taught us by giving his son for us. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time.